Will co-pilot notebooks replace OneNote notebooks? This may be a question you've asked yourself as Microsoft pours more AI features into its apps. So let's set the record straight. OneNote is not going anywhere. It's still the go-to application for long-term note-taking, jotting down ideas, gathering information together in digital notebooks. Copilot doesn't replace OneNote. It simply adds to it. So will Copilot notebooks take over OneNote notebooks? No, they are meant to work together. So in this video, let me show you what I mean by all of this. All right, let's take a look at the Copilot notebooks. Let's start with the definition of what is a Copilot notebook. A Copilot notebook is a smart workplace where you can ask Microsoft Copilot questions based on reference materials that you have added to that notebook space. So what's happening is Microsoft Copilot is actually getting answers from the information you're giving it. So you're going to see what kind of information we can add into this notebook. And you're going to see how this is really set up for you to have your own AI personal assistant on all the work you've already done. And that work could have been done in OneNote notebooks. It could have been done in uh, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint, any of the Microsoft products. And you can ask Copilot to gather this information for you through the notebook feature. So let's show you this in action. So I have a couple of examples of Copilot notebooks in front of us here. I'm going to click on the OneNote training notebook and you're going to see that I have a place here where I can ask questions of Copilot about this particular notebook. So really about the information I've put into the notebook. And so it is looking at my references and my references, if you notice here, are really either pages that I've added in from scratch. So I'm going to type in some information into the notebook and that would be the pages or I've connected to this notebook actual Word documents, pages from my OneNote notebooks, URLs. So in this case, this is my website, but it could be any website that I'm referencing here. And then again, some more Microsoft documents, including a PowerPoint as well. So with these references in mind, I can ask Copilot to do summaries for me. I could ask questions about anything that might be included in these references. I could actually ask uh, Copilot to make up emails to people with regards to things that might be in these references as well. All right, let's start by adding a reference. I'm going to add in a Word document and a page from one of my OneNote notebooks. So I'm going to click on the Add Reference button here and I can simply drag in that document, which is what I'm going to do. Or if you know that document somewhere easy for you to search, you can certainly type in the name of it. And I'm going to simply drag over a Word document that I have handy here. And it's a testimonial document. So I'm going to click on Add, uploaded it to my references. And it's really linking to where that document is on my, it's actually in my SharePoint. And so you'll see the little link showing there. So with regards to OneNote notebooks being a reference within the Copilot notebook, we can add in a OneNote page as a reference. We cannot add in an entire notebook as a reference. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a page and I'm going to type in the page I'm looking for. So I do need to know what the page name is in my OneNote notebook. It happens to be this one. And by the way, a trick in adding a OneNote page so it comes up as a reference on this list because I've found that it doesn't always come up. I have a lot of notebooks. I have a lot of notebook pages. They weren't all coming up for me. So what I ended up having to do was actually updating that page, making a little quick note in there for today. I opened it up in SharePoint so it was kind of activated. Then it came to the top of my list. That's just a little tip for you in case it's not bringing up the page name that you're expecting when you do the search. Okay, so there it is. So I'm going to choose add. And now let's click on these last two things that I added in here. I'm going to click on testimonials. So it's just a plain document with some testimonials in it from my book. Let's go to the OneNote posts. And it is in fact opening up the entire content management notebook that this page is from, but it's really linking just to this one page. Okay, now that we have a few references in here, I'm going to test out this Copilot notebook by asking it to do something for me. So I've asked it to create a social media post about OneNote and the struggles that people have and maybe give them a tip or an insight on that. And so what it's going to be looking for to create this is it's going to be looking for information in all these references that I've given it. So I'm going to click on the arrow. So that's what makes this Copilot so unique. It's not searching the entire web, you're controlling what it's searching. So it's giving me an answer here. Let's take a look at where this is being stored actually. So I'm going to click on the notebook name here and I'm back to that main page for my Copilot notebook and I'm going to click on chats 
and that's where it's keeping track of any chats I'm having with regard to what's in this Copilot notebook. So I have a number of ongoing chats uh, within this Copilot notebook that I can go back to and see information from. And what's kind of neat here in this one in particular, it says uh, it's asking for the top three struggles people have with OneNote and it's, it's listing them for me. And then it's showing me where it gathered that information from. So it's showing me the source, which of course is one of my references. Now, when asking Copilot to help you with information within this Copilot notebook, Copilot will look at up to 20 references. So it's looking at the first 20 you give it. If you give it more than 20, it's not looking at them. So just keep that in mind. And if you decide, okay, this reference isn't relevant anymore, you can always go to the reference and the three dots beside it and you can remove it. You can also reorder your references by simply dragging them around. Okay, now that we've added some references in, let's add in pages. And pages, by the way, will also count towards those 20 references that you give this particular notebook for search purposes. So to add a page, I'm going to click on plus new page. And it really is just a blank canvas for me to work with. So if I didn't have a reference or information already recorded somewhere, I can record it now. So in my page, I just typed in a title in the title area, and then I used the drop down to actually create a table of information for myself. Now you can see there's plus new here where I can add in another line within my table, or I can just click underneath and start typing or even use the plus sign there and choose what I want to work with next on this page. So this kind of seems a bit like a website page to me. There's a lot of options for what I can add into my page. I just looked up what the limits to a page, a Copilot page is, and it suggests that there is no limits, but in practicality, you, you want to have it less than 15,000 words so that the, the AI can read through it quickly. Now, a couple of other things about the page here. As I hover around the top of it, I do have the option to add a cover and add an icon. So if I add a cover, You'll see there's some stock images that are available to me. I can search whatever word I want to find for that cover. We'll go with technology. I'll add that in there and then add icon and click on that as well. Okay, so again, it's looking very much like a website page, isn't it? At the top of my table area on my page, I do have a little toolbar that just gives me some tools for working with this particular table. And then another area to be aware of is at the top right, I can actually open up this page in Word. So if I want to work in Word instead of in this area, because of the features I have available to me in Word, that might be a good idea. I also have a share option. So this is what you can share within your Copilot notebook is you can share a page at a time. You can't share the entire Copilot notebook. And then to the right of that, I do have a menu. And one of my options on my menu is to lock my page. So if I'm locking my page, I'm saying I don't want any changes on it. And so that would I would definitely be doing that if I'm sharing it and I want somebody just to be reading that page as opposed to editing it. And then, of course, we have a few other options, including delete, delete that page entirely. So I'm going to close out of this and you're going to see that tips on OneNote is one of my pages available to me as a reference now. So I'm building quite a few references in here. Now, when we're talking about references in terms of it helping us within this Copilot notebook, I should mention to you that grounding is something that's happening within Copilot here. And so grounding refers to the fact that Microsoft or Copilot, this Copilot notebook is anchoring itself to specific references you make. And so that being your reference list here, and again, specifically up to 20 references as opposed to it being an AI application that says, I'm going to go onto the web and just look for anything with this topic that you've just described and find some answers for you. It's grounding itself into your reference material. And that's important. Now, I was also curious about where are these Copilot notebooks being stored? And it's actually a container within your SharePoint site. So it's not on your OneDrive. It's not within a particular team of any kind. It's a container system, a protected container system within SharePoint. And just so you know, this container is private by default so that only you have access to it. Now I'd like to compare the Copilot notebook to the OneNote notebook. So we're really looking at the, the Copilot notebook as more of an AI powered 
work environment for ourselves. The Copilot Notebook is a pretty flat structure in that you just have the pages and the references showing in a big long list, really up to 20 items, right? Whereas your OneNote Notebook has a hierarchical type of organization where you have sections and pages within each of your notebooks. The AI integration, of course, is very deep in terms of the Copilot, but only allowing you to have 20 references as a max. Now, within your OneNote notebook, there are Copilot features available to you to help you summarize or do formatting, or even for you to chat about what's in your notes within that OneNote notebook. Now, in terms of collaboration within the Copilot notebook, you can only share a page at a time. You're not sharing your references that you brought in from other sources. Those things would have to be shared separately. And within OneNote, you have the ability to share an entire notebook with your team or within your SharePoint site, or even just individually with somebody via your OneDrive. The Copilot notebook and it's all, all its functioning is really available to you with a Copilot license. So you'd need to be using Copilot and paying for that subscription in order to get its full functionality. So I ask you, do you see yourself using Copilot notebooks instead of OneNote notebooks? Or do you see yourself combining the two of them because they both have strengths in their own way? Let me know your thoughts on this. Please drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.